Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video. I'm, I'm going to be doing a very requested video about how to get a job with Mac, what it's actually like, and experience kind of wise what I've dealt with as well. So one of the main myths about getting a job with Mac I personally find is that you have to have a qualification. Bullshit. <laughs> you do not have to have a qualification. I am not trained as a makeup artist and I managed to get a job for Mac in Brisbane in Australia. I have worked for Mac in Australia and New Zealand as well. Um, I had absolutely no experience except for being a mobile makeup artist. So it's one of the things that people love to say, which is 100% false. Of course, it's a little bit easier if you are trained as a makeup artist, but if you have talent, or the way I like to think of it as in you can't train someone to have a personality, but you can train someone to have skills of any sort. So, I mean, if you have an awesome personality or you are super talented at makeup, you can get a job there. You can get a job there, so don't worry about that at all. That's one of the main things that people always ask me about when it comes to working at Mac. Um, personally, I just found the job on the computer, sent my CV in, went and had my interviews, and then voila, done, dusted. Working at Mac is a lot different to what you would actually expect. Don't get me wrong, it is an amazing company to work for. I absolutely love the brand. The um, company as a whole is super awesome, but in saying that, you do work with a lot of different people, so sometimes your personalities can clash. Um, that's the same with most jobs that you will go through. There's always going to be that one person that you don't get along with as much as another person, but that's just life. You need to kind of get over that. I've worked with some amazing people. My team over in Australia, I still keep in contact with majority of them all the time, which is really awesome. Became really close friends, even though I live in New Zealand now. You get to meet so many new people, and then you do training through Mac as well. So obviously you can be trained before you go into Mac, but they do updates. So every couple of months they'll send you away, you learn about new products, um, the trends that are coming in for that new season. It is honestly amazing how much you can learn. I mean, you could be the most talented makeup artist in the world and going into Mac, just learning from other people that you work with. Uh, you've got the senior artists, which will teach you a lot, and then you also have your trainers, which will help you a lot. There's just so many different platforms that you go through uh, when it comes to Mac as a company that you can learn from each little bit which is really awesome. I mean, you guys would have seen how many Mac artists there are that have gone onto YouTube now, and everyone's skills are so different. It's amazing how much you can learn from different people. So I see videos put online all the time, which grinds my gears. And usually they go along the lines of my horrible Mac experience, racist Mac employee, just all those really negative headlines. Don't get me wrong, you could have dealt with someone who was really horrible, and I'm not saying that at all because there are horrible people in the world in any form of job. So the point that I'm trying to make is that it's not just Mac that has bad customer service for certain people. Underline that certain people because it all depends on the person that you are dealing with that gives you that bad experience. I mean, I've worked in bartending before. There was bad customer service there for certain people. Hospitality is exactly the same. Clothing and fashion, re <laughs> fashion retail. There are going to be bad people in every single type of job that you can get. But you shouldn't judge what everyone's going to be like. I've had so many people come into the counter and be like, Oh, I thought that you were going to be a really horrible person, but you're actually really nice and I love the service that you've given me. Again, you're prejudging me by coming into the counters that I've worked on thinking that I'm going to be like these bad people, which I'm not. I try and make it the best customer service that you can have because it's my job, which is the way I see it. I think that absolutely everyone, no matter what job you're doing, you should be giving the best customer service because you're getting paid to be there. You shouldn't be acting like a little bitch or acting so rude or anything like that. What type of industry you're in, there's always going to be certain people that are negative and do give you a really shit experience, which I mean, that sucks. Honestly, it sucks. It's their job. They should be giving you good service, but them as a person, 
that is what's stopping them from giving you service. So that's kind of what I'm trying to put a point across as just because you see these videos online about Mac girls and don't and don't get me wrong, there is a stigma attached to being a Mac girl, which is usually going to be snobby Mac girls. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> before I started working at Mac, I thought that from certain experiences that I had had. But now, since I worked there, I realized that it wasn't, and I shouldn't have generalized it and said that these girls are like that. Because it's bullshit, <laughs> and that's wrong on my part for prejudging back in the day. Because it is those certain people that give you that impression. It's not everyone. It's not the company, which is a really big thing. It's not the company at all. Sometimes companies obviously employ wrong people, which that is a problem. <laughs> and they need to sort that out. But it is those negative people that need to sort their shit out. So then they're giving good customer service. Because at the end of the day, they're the ones in the wrong. They're the ones that are sucking at their job, basically. The story that I have from working at Mac is so funny. It wasn't funny at the time, it was so horrible, but this lady came in, it wasn't personally my experience at the start of it, one of the girls that I worked with, she's an absolute sweetheart, so she's like the kindest soul ever, <laughs> so gentle, she came in and she was a woman of colour, and, and how Back to Mac in Australia used to work was it was for the top lipstick colours that you could choose from, so this lady came in with her Back to Mac products, and the girl that I worked with, she showed her the lipsticks, and was like, here we go, like these are the different colours, the different textures, and was talking her through it, and she was like, are you joking me? This is absolutely ridiculous. Why are these colours set? And the girl that I worked with was like, oh, well, that's just what um, Australia does as a company. I mean, these are the top colours, so they are cho chosen from what people like. And there is a different colour for each different type of like family, so you've got nudes, brights, bolds, everything like that, and they're different textures as well. And this lady was not having a bar of it. She was like, I have come into Mac before and I have purchased um, all these different products. And last time I brought back to Mac and I could choose a free foundation and I could choose a free powder. And we were looking at each other like, I don't know where you've come into on Mac. But I'm pretty sure nowhere lets you choose a free foundation for Back to Mag. Anyway, this lady wasn't having a bar of it. She was like, no, I've chosen foundations before. Um, and she was starting to yell. And it was literally causing a massive scene in front of everyone just because she wanted to try and get a foundation for free for Back to Mag. And so I stepped in and was going to help the girl that I worked with because she was freaking out. She didn't know what to do. We were like, whoa, calm down, lady. She was literally losing the plot. I've never seen someone do that in a shop before. We were talking about it and I was like to her, oh, I'm really sorry that there's not a color here. Would you like me to try them on you so you can have a look and see the different textures? Or is there any that you're gravitating more towards that you'd like to try on? No, nope. <laughs> she was not interested in trying anything on. She did her foundation and that was it, full stop. But um, I was like to her, oh, well, um, there's nothing that we can do. We can't actually give you a foundation for Back to Mac because that's not policy, um, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, well, I'm going to be calling your manager and laying a formal complaint and all of this stuff, like just yelling at us in front of everyone. And we're like, okay, calm down. We just kind of stood there and didn't know what to do. Um, but then she like stormed off in a half. And our manager came in later that day and we told him what had happened. And she never called, obviously, because she was trying to get a free foundation, which wasn't the way that it works. And she knew that, but she was just trying her luck with us because obviously we're not the manager. And we told our manager what had happened and he was like, oh no, don't worry about it. Obviously she is just having one of those days and he didn't mind because he knew what we were like. And it just kind of shows you that we do get really cr crazy customers, but obviously everyone gets crazy customers, especially in hospitality. Oh my God, that was the worst thing ever when I worked in hospitality. But just to show you guys that we do have to put up with a lot of shit as well. So you get those videos that make Mac artists look really bad and from a, quite a few that I've seen they generalize everyone and they say I'm not going to be purchasing from Mac anymore I hate the company what they stand for and to me I just feel like that's a little bit harsh and it's actually quite rude and mean of people to generalize everyone in that because fair enough if you've had a bad experience that is horrible and I feel for you and that is just shit but you've got to remember that it's that person 
or people if it's like a, a really bad counter that were doing that. It wasn't everyone. So don't put everyone into a group because the people that I've worked with and seen at different counters, even going in as a customer, customer <laughs> myself, especially since I've left working for Mac, I've had really amazing customer service from people. Again, I've had bad customer service from people as well, but it all depends on that person that you get. So don't generalize a company and say that Mac is really bad because they're not. They are an awesome company to go and buy products for when you look at the range that they have compared to different companies. Not saying that they're the best because there's different companies that are awesome for different things, but Mac has so many different products that you can choose from, which makes it really awesome, especially foundation wise. For me, NW10, that's the foundation I wear. This foundation, and I have never found another foundation from a different brand that actually matches my skin coloring. So that's awesome for me. But you've got other companies which are the bomb.com for different things as well. But you've just got to remember that you can't say that Mac as a company sucks because it doesn't. It's, it's a bloody awesome company to work for, to purchase from, to be around in general in my opinion. There are going to be shitty customer service from shitty Mac artists. That's their fault. That's not the company's fault and that's not their team's fault. That is their fault as a single person. And I feel like a lot of people always talk about Mac artists do nothing, they just stand there thinking that they look pretty and all of this stuff. That is a load of bollocks as well because personally like say for example when I used to go into the counter you'd be busy a lot of the time so you're always with customers, always trying to find exactly what's right. Well for me I would never sell a product that I wouldn't recommend to someone. That's the way I think though, I mean I wouldn't lie to a customer. I wouldn't lie to someone coming in and asking for my honest opinion because obviously they're going to find out that you're a liar and they're not going to come back. That's the way I see it. I mean, I don't, I, some people, you know, in customer service and retail, they kind of suck and <laughs> they get you to come in and recommend stuff that you don't actually need and it's a waste of money, which I'm the complete opposite. I'm like, no, you don't need this, but you could have a look at this. This is actually something that you might like kind of thing. So you have loads of customers that are coming in wanting to try on different stuff. A lot of the time people come in and they just want to try stuff on and then they leave. Which is completely fine. I mean, I do that all the time. I want to go and try something out, see how it wears. And then, you know, if I like it, I'll go back. But you've got to see it as... So people are coming in, they're constantly trying stuff on, they might go away for the day and come back another day or come back later in the day. So obviously that takes up time of the artists that are working on that counter because you've got to try on everything that they want. I mean, why wouldn't you? Someone's coming in and they want to try stuff on, that's your job. But you've also got face charts that you need to do. So a face chart is kind of like a piece of paper with a drawn on face and you use makeup to apply a makeup look on this piece of paper. Like you're basically coloring in a face and shading it and contouring it and blending eyes and everything that you do on your face on this piece of paper. And there are so many talented artists, especially on Instagram, you can see some pretty epic face charts if you search up like Mac face charts, I think. Um, the artistic working for the brand, which is one thing that I absolutely loved because I loved that I could be an individual while I was working at Mac. I was wearing different colors every day, different styles. I mean, when I started working at MAC, I would literally set my brows with clear brow gel, and that was it. <laughs> I hated brows. I thought that they were like, cover up these big black things on my face. <laughs> but you get so creative that you do loads of different things. I mean, look at my brows now. They are not hidden anymore. <laughs> But you try on different styles, different makeup looks, and that's just for you going into counter so when people come in they can see the different looks. Um, you also have trend tiers, so a trend tier is when you get given a photograph, so it could be like searching Google Images and you could search up um, full inspired looks or runway shows or something like that. You get given that photo and you have to recreate it so it's exactly the same. I mean, the photo could be posing like there and you can't go you've got to pose like that as well so 
it's really awesome the different things that you can do while working at MAC and then you can also climb the ladders as well so you might start as a permanent part-timer and then you might go to full-time 2IC manager there's trainers that you can go for um, so many different management roles as well they really like when people step up and they go through the ladder of um, the roles that you can go higher and higher up so working at MAC um, you do wear black clothes every day you can wear whatever you want as long as it's not too inappropriate obviously they don't want you going and looking like you're ready to go to a strip club or something like that but you can wear absolutely anything you want um jewelry wise you can wear gold silvers copper coppers any form of metal or like metallic kind of look so you can wear loads of jewelry if you want you don't have to wear any just whatever your style is you can show off your tattoos they don't mind if you color your hair like my old 2ac she was so awesome and she had basically every color that you could think of for her hair and it was amazing because she was a hairdresser as well so her, her hair was always on point but it was so epic to work with someone that was really creative with their hair as well as makeup. I've had some amazing um, experiences while working at MAC as well. I mean I've had ladies that have come in who have been in their 70s and have never really worn makeup before who have ended up in tears because they're so happy that you've taken the time to show them what to do because no one else has taken that time to which I mean to me that just like warms my heart that just by showing them for like half an hour if you've got a slow day what they can do with makeup that it means so much to someone coming in because to me you can change anyone's look with makeup and it can boost their confidence so much I mean I wear makeup as a creative a creative outlet I don't wear makeup because I feel self-conscious about my face or anything like that um, when I'm not at work or if I'm not doing anything too like dramatic where I need to look good if I'm just running errands or like quickly popping to town then I never wear makeup but being able to see customer wise when they come in and it means so much to certain people that is the most rewarding thing about working in cosmetics I personally find it. The customer range, like the range of customers that you have coming in is so different. You could have people that are 15 to 90, um, males, females, just absolutely anyone can come in. And that's what I thought was so awesome. I mean, people used to kind of be like, oh, so have you ever done a guy's makeup before? Of course I have. It's all the same to me, but being in an atmosphere where other people feel the exact same and they feel like it's just normal, it's nothing different, that's what I loved because when people are closed-minded, that just sucks. I mean, I don't like being around closed-minded people because... It just feels like a little bit more negative whereas I find that everyone that I've worked with um, when it's come to Mac and Mac is a company because their motto is all ages all races all sexes that covers everyone basically like why wouldn't you want to work for a company that thinks that because it's just so awesome and they actually do different classes and that kind of thing as well. So, I mean, you've got your classes that you can do. You can go in for makeup appointments. You can go in for makeup lessons. So, they do half of your face and then you do the other half. And then you have the um, classes which you can do. So, they're master class type things. Each one kind of ranges through a different thing. Like, one might be more natural beauty and then the next one might be like a smoky cat eye kind of thing. But you can go to those classes and then they're again redeemable back and free product. But it's so awesome awesome that there is a company that does that a lot of counters will do that but I mean it's always good to go in and ask certain counters might not have enough room you do have a negative side as well though I mean like working at Mac this could happen anywhere though but personally I've been told that I'm racist before because I don't know how to apply makeup on basically women of color because hey I am so pale I'm like a ghost which is bull crap I mean Loads of people that I know are Asian or dark skinned and I can do their makeup and they love it. So I feel like that is just complete crap. But um, it's just you get those negative people that come in. You get negative people that you can work with. You get negative people that come in. There's going to always be people that want to complain about something and you've just kind of brush it off and be like meh. I mean that's your problem as long as you're doing your job basically. I'm not saying like 
be a shit worker or something and don't do your job but if you're doing everything to the best of your ability and someone's still not happy I'm, I mean what can you do you can't do anything so you just have to brush it off and be like cool but yeah I mean you do get a lot of people I mean especially darker ladies used to come in they'll be like how do you know what to apply on me your skin color is so different from mine or you're so pale compared to me and I'm like well, I mean, if I paint a strip on your face and I see that it's the same colour, obviously that's a good colour match. And if I paint it on it's the wrong colour, it's going to be obvious. <laughs> that's what I like to think anyway, but okay. They have awesome programs as well. So, I mean, you have the Back to Mac program, which when you take six empty containers, anything glass or plastic, basically everything that they sell though, back to one of the normal Mac hunters, they'll let you choose a free product. There's also the MAC AIDS Fund, so um, there's certain lipsticks, the ones that have the red packaging on them, and there's also glosses that they come out with sometimes as well. 100% of the proceeds of those lip products gets um, sent to people that have AIDS, so they go into the MAC AIDS Fund, a lot of the time it will stay in your area, and then it will help those people and their families for what they need, so it could be something to do with schooling, it could be something to do with medical supplies, there's just so many different things that it goes towards to help them which I think is absolutely amazing so far they've made millions and millions and millions of dollars which I mean how amazing is that for a company to make that much money and help those people because that is what you want um, before going into a job obviously you do want to know these types of things as well it will really really help because a lot of the time they'll say so what do you know about the company and um, ha what have you heard from us and that kind of thing so knowing those um, also knowing about the founders so the two Franks that it was made in um, Toronto and Canada to start off with that's a really good thing to know especially when you're going into a job interview um, you also want to know the Santa Ization methods so say for example lipsticks you want to wipe them with the alcohol not alcohol that you go and drink kind of thing but they have like little bottles which will sterilize everything so you want to make sure everything that you are using when you go into a trial for Mac you are sanitizing you want that down packed so all powders make sure they're wiped with tissues before you use them lipsticks make sure that they are wiped down because, you know, we don't want herpy lips or something from someone. I mean, who knows who's tried some stuff. I mean, you just don't want to take that risk. Um, you've got mascara wands. You want to use a single mascara wand for one eye. Then use another mascara wand for an eye. And they are disposable, so chuck them out straight after. I mean, you've got spatulas, which you can use. You want to depot everything. So say, for example, paint pots, which you'd use on the eyes. Don't grab your brush and swirl it around and then put it straight on there. Right? Use a little spatula, put it on your petri dish. So if you don't know what a petri dish is, it's kind of like a palette. And then you want to use it from that just because they'll really appreciate you know what you're doing when it comes to sanitary stuff. If you have any other questions, please leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them as much as I know. <laughs> I but I hope this helps in some way or shape or form or just lets you guys know not to judge us in any way. That's the same for all makeup counters as well. I feel like the beauty industry gets judged quite harshly when you work in it. But anyway, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye!